Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Drop in the Gloves. Thanks for joining us here next Monday, April 1st. It's April Fool's Day, Tim. You want to do a joke? You want to play a prank on people? <laughs> it's a little late now. Yeah, we thought about doing one, but I thought it would have been funny. But I guess you didn't go for it. That's okay. Do you ever, do you ever think it's just like been uh, watered down? People just expect it? Yeah, there's a lot of stupid jokes on Twitter this morning, like the Leafs or Seinfeld Kessel or whatever and things like that. And it's a little lame. It's a little lame. But yeah, that's why I didn't want to go into the fray. It's like, ah, uh, people are just expected. So whatever. It is what it is. Hey, what was your did you ever do a prank when you were a kid or growing up? What, any go to things that you would fool people on, Tim? Were you a fool? Uh, no, like I can't, like there was one year I did like uh, toothpaste and an Oreo for my little brother type of mm. thing. But told him it was a mint Oreo, which they which exists. Um, but nothing crazy. What about you? We would replace the sh the sugar with um salt. Everybody used to put like sugar in their coffee or tea at my house, yeah. and then um, well, my parents and they they hated it, absolutely hated it. They'd be going out the door and take a sip of their tea, it just tastes like garbage. So that was that was that was the one, but no, nothing big. I think we did one on the show a few years back. People really. About Ovi. Right. Yeah, we said we got, we're interviewing Ovi at the end of the episode, stay around, and oh, that was that's probably two right. years ago. Yeah. Everybody, that, people were upset. People were very upset. But we are getting Ovi today, so stick around. It's going to drop near the end of the episode. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I'm so funny. It's crazy. All right, Tim, how was your weekend? Big Easter weekend? Did you, did you uh, do anything fun? Yeah, I had a great weekend, actually. My uh, younger cousin was in town visiting. She's um, she's from Traverse, and she's a junior at Boston College and just wanted to get out of town for the weekend, didn't feel like going home. And so um, we arranged for her to come visit me in Charlotte, and it was great. Mm -hmm. Like, I showed her around town, and, um, like, I don't know. It's nice when you have visitors. Same thing when you were in Traverse. When I was in Travis, it's like when people come in, you start to show them, like, the coolest neighborhoods, the coolest spots, the bars, the restaurants and the tours of the area and you kind of see it for the first time again and you're like man I, this is a cool like i i you take it for granted when you live there every day so it was really nice to kind of just explore the city with her again and it was a lot of fun a lot of fun how was your weekend that's good yeah church easter lots of uh festivities very fun the kids get all jacked up so it was a good time yeah did a hawks game very tired but uh feeling better finally Thank goodness. Good. I think I had pneumonia. So I I think we talked about it before. I tried to go to the doctors and they're like, no, we don't want you to come in. We don't we don't want to see you anymore. How does that work? I think I'm very sick. I want to come and make sure, you know, I'm getting the treatment I need. And they just say flat out, no, go to the emergency room, they said. Huh. I said, okay. Cause because I hadn't been in in like five years. <laughs> and they said yeah you're inactive I said because i've been healthy why would i come in like oh you got to come in for checkups annual why oh well you got you got to make sure you're you know healthy i'm like yeah healthy it was stupid stuff like that no time for so she was just mid-sentence well there's an there's a clinic rate i just click thank you never going back to you again it's like my other kids doctors i I'm still in collections with them because they want $200 from me. And I said, I'm not paying it. You guys made the mistake. Anyway, it's a whole other topic. My pride gets the better of me sometimes. Just like it does. Or my common sense. I think that's the better way to put it. It doesn't make sense to me. So I have to go in and give you money every year, doctor's office, just to make sure that I'm healthy. You make that make sense. Yeah, but like you can't be the one, the only one to decide whether or not you're healthy. You could feel great and all of a sudden there's like different chemical level imbalances or whatever that you wouldn't know unless you got tested. Especially now, John, you got eight little girls. You got to make sure that you're going to live as long as you can. Seven. Right? Let's pump the brakes here. Seven. I understand once you get to a certain age, you have to go in for annual tests. Just like, like 40? No, 40, you're supposed to get your prostate at 50. Get that. But you're the arbiter of your health. I have a different threshold than you. Tim gets like a sniffle. <laughs> He's like going all in, doing testing to the nth degree. You got to come in every year. Going to make sure you're doing okay. Why? Because you want money? No. And then when I really get sick, where are you? 
You're nowhere to be found. You're not, you're not here to help me. So that will be the last time I go to that doctor's Tim. And lo and behold, I fought it off. I took some vitamin D, took some vitamin C feeling great. So take that. Um, what's, what's the doctor's office? Cherry Bend or something. Yeah. Never going there again. <laughs> Anyways, my alma mater, Tim was playing in this, the final 16 for the, for the hockey NCAA finals. They matched up against BC this past weekend. And I'll tell you what, for, for a small school, Michigan tech total, I think student population of roughly seven to 8,000, not nearly the biggest school out there. Very small. I would say they're the smallest school still playing. They play pretty well against BC, who is enrollment, I believe, is probably in the 20, 30, 40,000, I would think, in a huge metropolitan, which is Boston. Played them so incredibly hard the first period and a half to two periods, maybe pulling off an upset, but then BC pulled away late. It was 1 1, Tim. For the longest time, BC gets a 2 1 goal, but gosh, good job, Michigan Tech Huskies. Huskies. I have to give them some props because I played there for four years, never even sniffed the playoffs. We got beat out first round every single year. We were terrible to go to the final 16, almost, you know, beat the number one team in the country. That's a good job. Coach Joe, Joe Sean, all the Pietola boys, Mosley, all those guys, they play fantastic, played their heart out. I watched the game. Tim watched the game. They played really well, didn't they, Tim? They did. Yeah, I, we watched the whole thing because my cousin Kira is a, at BC. So it was a good game for her, too. And, you know, the whole campus is just in on this team this year because of how good they've been. And we watched the whole thing. And after I think it was 1-1 one, one after 1, I kind of yep. said, like, this might be the best period you see from Michigan Tech. Like they gave them everything they could handle, the shorthanded goal to tie it up. And I was like, mm-hmm. I, I just feel like the, as the game goes on, the better team might start to pull away. And then credit to them hanging on for another period, two to one going into the third. Um, but then just BC, just, just so skilled. Yep. And I kind of explained like there's a couple of like just extra passes they were making in slick little moves in the way that, uh, who was a Ryan Leonard? Did you see the, the goal he scored off his stick? Uh, off his skate, I mean, he passed it up to himself in full stride. Just amazing. So, um, so much, you know, NHL uh, incoming talent on that group, but a lot of credit to Michigan Tech. And it's been a great tournament. Like, there were a lot of teams that just played really well, like Michigan State last night, Quinnipiac lost to BC in the next game, mm-hmm. uh, Wisconsin, you know, they all played great. But the final four comes down to BC versus Denver and BU versus Michigan, both later in this week. So, just a, it's a great week for college hockey. I watched a lot of games. Yeah, it, the, the skill level is incredible. The Frankie yeah. Nazar, a Chicago Blackhawk prospect, made one of the <laughs> pretty sick passes on a 2 on one between his legs to the guy weak side, right on his tape, and the guy buries it past the uh, Michigan State goaltender. But uh, fun to watch. Good, good for hockey. Good for college hockey. I will – I'm not going to go that far to say a college hockey team could walk in and win the Mem Cup, but they might be able to. There's some good talent in the NCAA, and it's very, very, very close. Back when I played, juniors were much better. The Q, the Dub, the O, they were way better. That gap is, if not gone, very, very close to him. That's why every year you see the number one, number two, number three overall pick coming from the college hockey ranks, and we'll see it again this year with uh, Calabrini. So, not Calabrini. Um, yeah, Calabrini. Celebrini, yeah, he's C. Macklin. He's going to be incredible. Very, very good player. What, rookie of the year, everything. The guy's winning awards out the yin-yang. But yeah, BC, Denver, BU, Michigan, aforementioned Calabrini pays for BU. BC's got NHL stars out the yin-yang. And I don't know much about Denver, but Michigan's a solid team too. All right, Tim, this episode is brought to you by Bet99. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. Bet99, voted number one online gaming experience in Canada. Same day, parlays. Same day. Not next day, not previous day. Same day parlays, player props, flash bet markets. Elevate, elevate your experience at Bet99, Tim. Do it, elevate it. Today's pick, Alex Lafreniere. New York Rangers forward, 13 points in his last nine games. Did you know that, Tim? I did now. He's on fire. He's absolutely on fire. We're going to talk about him in a second. But first, in order to play Bet99, have to be 19 plus and you have to play responsibly only available to people in ontario canada unfortunately sorry everybody else maybe move to ontario if you want more deals bet 99 is built by canadians for canadians bet 99 
All right, moving on. Speaking of Alex Afrenier, Tim, he's got 13 points, nine games. The New York Rangers are playing pretty well. Three goals, two assists Saturday night. That means a hat trick and two assists, five points. Not bad. Has he finally broken out of his shell? Is he is he on the scene now? Or is this an outlier? And then next year he's going to come back down to earth because this we you know he's he's been in the league now for a few years. We've been expecting this. Is this is this the new Alex Afrenier? I think so. Yeah. Um, just incredible game. Five points, like you said. We actually had a couple of listeners. It was in Arizona who were there. Shout out to Aaron and uh, and Chris were both there. Uh, were messaging me and talking about how great it was in the arena and all that. Um, Lafreniere now has more five-on-five goals this year than McDavid, Jason Robertson, Ehlers, Aho, Dreisaitl, Marshawn, Pedersen, Barzal. Like, he is, he's an elite company on five-on-five production. Um, and that's... A, you know, you put them on an elite power play on top of that, which has gone hot and cold this year, the Trochex Panarins of the world. Um, one of the things that we've talked about with the Rangers in years past, why they haven't been able to go on a deep cup run, is that they weren't getting enough from those younger guys. Because we, you know what you're going to get from those top dogs, but then you need scoring depth. You need guys to live up to their potential and to create those, you know, multiple scoring opportunities throughout the lineup. And Lafreniere and Kako and those similar guys, Tietl, weren't doing it in years past. If Lafreniere now, who's up to 52 points in 74 games, so let's say he continues on that pace, and in order to win two rounds, you need seven points from him. How much of how much of a boost does this give to the Rangers? If he continues this this pace, do you consider them a top team in the East? Is that is that that important? Well, yeah, I think it's critical for them to have him to be a productive player. Uh, I don't think they're – I want to tread lightly here because I don't want to offend a lot of people. I know I'm going to offend some people, but I, I really – they have 104 points. They're first place in the Eastern Conference. They're playing great. They're 8-2 and two in their last 10. They're, they're on a really good stretch. They had a, just a really terrible – or not terrible, like a really tough road swing recently. They, they played really well. They're playing good hockey. I, I don't trust them. Tim, I don't. I, I'm sorry. I really, I really worry about them once they hit to the playoffs because what you need in playoffs is depth. You need secondary scoring. You need third line scoring. You need a fourth line to be productive. You need all of that to be clicking at the same time in order to move on to the Stanley Cup final. I don't trust their fourth line. I know they got Barkley Gaudreau. I don't. He has fallen off massively. The guy's got nine points this year, two goals. I don't trust Willie Cully. I don't trust Matt Rempe. I don't trust G- Jimmy VC. I don't trust their third line. Brodzinski. I like the Wenberg pickup. He's okay. I don't trust. I don't trust them. You know what I mean? To win them a series. I really don't. I like their first line. Kreider's have been a jad. They're great. You know how I feel about Roslevic. I don't think he's a first line player. But Aaron's arguably one of the best players in the leagues. Trocek's fantastic. Lafreniere, he's doing a lot better. I don't trust them. So if they have any chance, any chance to advance past the second round, Lafreniere has to be better than okay. He has to be better than just seven points in a series. He has to be incredible. He has to be very, very effective. Look at the right side. Roslovic, Lafreniere, Capococco. Kidding me? Right wing is like, let's go. That's, that's where goal scores live. Like, same with like that's what the wings are now. The wings are we're gonna we're gonna light it up, baby. It's go time. So I, they're playing great though. You, you you have to tip your cap to them. Their defense is great. Lindgren's back. We know how great Adam Fox is. I'm a big 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 Keandre Miller fan. I think he's fantastic. You know how I feel about uh, Truba. Lights out. Love their defense. I just I, I can't I can't get behind this team, Tim. I do, I don't know why. They have 104 points. They're playing great hockey. They're winning. They have momentum. Everything seems to be going their way. Right now, they're playing the Philadelphia Flyers in the first round. I could easily see it going to six. Easily see it going to six and maybe seven. I, I Is that just me? But the, the top two teams in the East, the Atlantic and the Metro, I have no faith in whatsoever. I would take the Panthers and the Hurricanes over the Bruins and the Rangers all day, every day. That's just that's just how I see it. I I don't know. Maybe I'm oblivious to it. I've watched the Rangers play. I've I've watched the Bruins play. 
I'm not, I'm not drinking that Kool-Aid and I don't think I'm going to. I feel like they're susceptible to an upset. And if you push them to seven, if you push them in a series, I, I just don't, I don't think they have the guys. That's all, that's all I'm trying to say. Convince me, convince you I'm wrong. I don't know that I can. Um, I was pretty critical of the Rangers before the season. Remember, I think I might have even had one of my bold predictions them missing the playoffs, uh, which I obviously wasn't correct about. They're playing excellent right now, five in a row they've won. But I just, I don't, I'm not buying in either. And this is actually kind of a popular take right now. I think Bobby Ryan said the same thing last week. They just don't, oh, I don't really? trust them in the playoffs. Oh. That's what it, that's what it's about. Um, if I'm the as a speaking as a Bruins fan. I'd rather play the Rangers, which won't happen, but I'd rather play them than Toronto, than Tampa, than obviously Carolina and, and Florida. Like, I'd rather play them over all these teams. I think they match up pretty well against them. I think this is a team that can be beat more easily than those other ones. So I think the difference is going to be um, the defense, obviously, is really strong. If Shesterkin's on, he might be the best goalie in the East. So, like, that's going to have a big factor in all this. But I, I, I'm not going to convince you otherwise. I think you're, I think you're probably right. They make me nervous for their potential to go on a deep run. Yeah. And then, okay, it begs the question. Lafreniere signed a deal. He's going to be up after next year. You have Panarin, you have Zabinajad, you have Kreider, you have Trochik, you have all these guys locked up long-term. Fox, your demon is Lindgren's locked up. You have all these guys. Truba's locked up for a while. Does he, does he fit long-term for you? If you just say he ends up 60 some points this year, he had a great year. Is this your long-term guy, or do you just kind of wait to see what happens again? Make him prove it again. No, this is him. This is, this is my long-term guy. They've proven that they they want to stick by him and be be patient with him. You know, people were trading, calling for him to be traded a year or two ago, forgetting how young he was, and we were guilty of that too. He's still only twenty-two years old. Yeah, he's going to put up about sixty points, I think, when it's, when it's all said and done. And I was doing some digging this morning on other other guys who had similar breakouts that you can kind of see them taking a step forward in, in, in multiple years to all of a sudden going off for 90 plus points. And this isn't an exact one-to-one -one match in terms of their age or, or amount of years in the league, but other young players that had a similar breakout. Uh, first, Tim Stutzla had 29 points, followed by 58, which is a big jump, followed by 90 points, right? Braden Point, similar thing, 40, followed by 66, followed by 92. And then you have Lafreniere, the last three years, 31 points, 39 points, 52 currently, about 60, I think, when the year's done. If you follow that same projection as those other guys, he's going to have a breakout season next year. I, I would think at least a point per game if he continues this, and maybe he does 90 plus like those other guys did. And this is the first overall pick. So, like, the pedigree's there. This isn't just a young player who keeps getting better, which it is. But it's more than that because we always knew that this was his his ceiling. So I feel like if I'm the Rangers, this is exactly what I want to see from him this year. And he could easily be one of the best players in the NHL next year. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that would be quite the jump. One of the best players in the NHL. I agree with you. I, I think he sticks with the Rangers, but it's it's easy. I don't I don't want to downplay his progression. He's playing with Panarin and Trochik. You know? Yeah, I think he's there. I, I think we're going to see that. I hope, I hope he we is. do. Yeah, yeah I, I, he, I don't want to, I shouldn't downplay. He's been playing really good hockey. I would wait <laughs> if we're going to start negotiations. I would not talk to him this offseason. I would wait till next year gets going. And if you can tell he's putting points up, then you start renegotiating for that eight year deal, you know, seven million per. Right now, let's just pump the brakes. It, it's, it's a good season. But again, like Panarin's going to be 33 next year. You know, Trochik's going to be 31. Frenier's going to be 23. So it, it, the, the time frames maybe aren't lining up like they'd want them to be for New York. Not that they're going to win anything. They're hot garbage. They suck. They're not going to go anywhere. <laughs> anyway, so Best team in the East. Yeah. <laughs> First place in the East. Can you believe it? First place in the whole league. Yeah. Are they first in the full, in the whole league? What happened to the Stars? I thought they had they were up there too. They're, is it yeah, possible? they're one point behind them. Both teams is has ever happened in the East and the West losing the first round. Uh probably. Yeah, it's had to have happened. Because last year, who was first in the league last year? Just kidding. It's the Bruins. 
silence. Teresa. Let's talk about the uh, the standings a bit, and because okay. we had a lot of people, new teams clinch over the weekend, and, and other kind of interesting things happening in those wild card battles. So the, the teams now that have clinched the playoff spot: Rangers, Canes, Panthers, Canucks, Stars, Bruins, and Avalanche. So mostly in the East, a couple teams in the West, although it's still technically open, but we we know that we th- looked at that last week, and that's going to be locked in. So the West is really locked in. The East comes down to two out of three teams, two spots, three teams left between the Capitals, the Flyers, and the Wings. Neither, well, two of these teams don't really want to seem to want it very bad. The Wings and the Flyers are both three, five, and two in their last 10. Meanwhile, the Capitals have kept playing great. They keep surprising me and everybody else. We talked last, on uh, Wednesday last week about the Wings' tough schedule coming up. They were playing Carolina in Carolina on Thursday, Florida in Florida on Saturday. They lost both those games. And I said at the time, like, we'll know by, you know, the end of the weekend whether or not the these close to insurmountable odds will still be feasible. And they lose both the games, which are, I would say, must wins for them. They play Tampa tonight, which, you know, just every game is just critical at this point. And it gets even tougher. They play the Rangers on Friday which is back at home, which is good for them. But still, those are four juggernauts in a row, and they cannot lose all four. They've lost two so far. So that's a really tough thing for them. And I just I was hoping that they would have at least got one of those games, and they didn't. Yeah, the good thing is is they can lose them because the team they're chasing, the Philadelphia Flyers, has been playing terrible. Absolutely atrocious. I, I, I called the game on the 30th when they played the Chicago Blackhawks. They were awful. Then. Absolutely terrible. Top to bottom, no urgency in the game. Their first line connect knee didn't look like he was skating at all. He was just kind of gliding out there. They just thought they had an easy win. Lo and behold, they get waxed five to one. Wasn't even close. Tortorella's smiling on the bench. He's like, this is what you get, you dummies. Like this, this is exactly what you get. So it's up for grabs. It's basically whoever wants to string together a two, three winning streak will win this. I, the Flyers have the easier schedule. When you look at who they have left to play, you get the Islanders tonight, then you get the Sabres, you get the Blue Jackets, you get the Canadians. Like those are three must win games. You get the Devils who have already checked out. So on paper, the Flyers should win this, even though they're giving up a game in hand. It, it's Isn't it funny? Must win games and you just come up and lay an egg. So we'll see. I don't know who's going to take it. Who? Here's the bigger question. Who would you rather see in the playoffs right now? The Philadelphia Flyers, Tim, or the Detroit Red Wings? As an objective hockey fan, I I like both these stories. Um, I think Detroit. Mm-hmm. I think Detroit. I'd rather see what Larkin and Kane and those guys can do. I want to see Mo Sider in the playoffs. As good of a story as Philly's been, and you know they have just surprised everyone this year. I thought they'd be another lottery pick, and they. It's a great story, but I think just I, as far as the season has gone and, and the rest of the way, I'd rather see Detroit. And I also think Detroit has a better chance of surprising somebody in the first round. I don't know if they have a chance of beating anyone. Maybe Boston, they match up really well against Boston, but I think they have a better chance of uh, giving them a six or seven game series. And again, just the more Patrick Kane you see in the playoffs, the better. Yeah, I agree. I, th- I think Detroit across the board, more enjoyable to watch, bigger chance for an upset. It would just be fun. Patrick Kane in the playoffs is 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 a lot of fun. Plus so, Larkin. Larkin. Last time he too. was in the playoffs, he wasn't the player that he is now. You know, so yeah, Philly. Gosh, does Tortorella get fired? That's even a bigger question. I like what Danny Breyer's done. I think Keith Jones is an excellent president. What happens? Like the rubber has to meet the road at some point in Philadelphia. You can't have all that's happened. And then if you slip out of the playoffs, you were you were firmly locked in a playoff position if you're the Philadelphia Flyers a month ago. And then you start March, and it's just been losses, 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 up and down. A couple of sprinkled in wins. You know, they beat the Bruins. That was a good win. They beat the Leafs. That was a good win. But then you lose to the Blackhawks. You lose to the Canadians. You lose to the Rangers. You lose to the Panthers. You lose to the Leafs and the Blues and the Lightning and the Capitals. And then you're out of the playoffs. So is there any discussion of John Tortorella leaving? Because you know when the exit meetings, you have your separate meetings. Every player is meeting with the GM. Every player is meeting with the coaches. I, I, I would guess, Tim, the conversation will come up between the high-end guys and Danny Briere. What do you think of Torts? What, where do you want this to go next year? 
you think any player is going to give Tortorella the vote of confidence after what happened the last month, month and a half of the season? I don't think so. Well, I mean, without Torts, how good is this Flyers team? Like, this could have been a lottery team, like we said. So this could be the main reason, not the only, but the most important reason that they are where they are right now in terms of being in a playoff spot, fighting for this race. On the flip side, like, the last couple of weeks, like, it wasn't that long ago that, like you said, they were locked into the playoffs, and then he gets suspended, and then he sits his captain and scratches him, then he jumbles the lines, he doesn't put his best players out, and then he can't get his team up to win two must-win games against two of the worst teams in the league. Like, there's a little bit of, of ego where it kind of rubber meets the road. So I don't know that he's his job is on the line because I think he surprised everyone. He's a, he's a favorite to a lot of people until maybe about a week ago to win the Jack Adams just because of what he's done with his roster. So I can imagine Sean Couturier might have something to say about, you know, towards his fit and how he gets along with him. But I can't imagine they'd look too hardly at um, at his job being on the line, but who knows? I don't know. I feel you think like, so? uh, yeah, I, I do. I feel like we've talked about this before. He has a shelf life, and I love Torts. Don't get me wrong. I love the way he coaches. I like the way he how he handles the press and his players. He's very upfront. I don't want to get this misconstrued with my feelings about him, but he does have a shelf life on a team. You saw it in Tampa Bay. You saw it with the Rangers. You saw it with the Columbus Blue Jackets. It, it's around five years. Where players are just fed up with his antics. And maybe it's growing shorter because players these days have, have been around the block. They know how he coaches. And players know they have a little more say in the locker room now and they have a little more say around the organization. I, the conversation will be had. And if, if I'm Danny Briere and I'm trying to build something here, is he my long term solution? I don't think so. Yes, he was a good stopgap. He's still signed for two more years at $4 million per. So you have to pay him. I don't know. The conversation will be had because he obviously didn't agree with Katuria getting the getting the C. That was that was a Jones and Briere decision. So there might be some animosity between those two factions as well. So we'll see. They they're still trying to make the playoffs. If they make the playoffs, it's a moot point. But if they don't, it could be interesting. It could be interesting, Tim. So stay tuned. I hope Detroit gets in because I'm all for that drama. I think it'll be fantastic just to just to play out. Well. There was a report this morning, too, speaking of coaching drama, um, from Bob Duff at Detroit Hockey Now, said, quote, an NHL source is telling Hockey Now that the possibility of a coaching change is something that is being pondered by Detroit Red Wings GM Steve Eisenman. The Red Wings continue their free fall out of a playoff position, and Eisenman's patience is running low. The source notes that former Blues coach Craig Berube might be the leading candidate for the job. John, there are seven, eight games left in the year. Is this a, a crazy time to make a coaching change? Or are they talking about in the, in the summer? I have no idea why the hell they, this would even come out. This is terrible. If, if, you're like, what's, if you're the Red Wings, if you're the players, if you're anybody, because like, you have to address it. You have to go into the locker room and say, hey, fellas, because like Derek Lalonde, he's been there a few years. He's respected. The guys like him. Patrick Kane apparently really likes him. So I don't. It's just they they brought him in when in 2022. So he's been there what two three years now. It's 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 not good if this is already being leaked. So no, you can't have a coaching change right now. You can't. There, there's no possible way. So I don't know who's leaking this. Maybe it's someone in the Philadelphia Flyers organization <laughs> trying to get the edge. But it's it's just unfortunate timing. I don't know who. It's so dumb. It doesn't make sense to me. You can't. But anyways, moving on. We, can, we can't speculate. That's not what we do. Here. Yeah. Just, just to put a bow on this, the odds right now, as of April 1st, the Capitals 74% to make the playoffs, the Flyers 72 and then still hanging in there are the Wings at 27%. So I have the Wings be, making it. So I, yeah. I will buck the odds. I think the Caps come third, and then the Wings get the second wild card. That's my predictions right now. I hope so, but I think it's going to be Caps and Flyers, just okay. because of stre the strength of schedule going down the list. Okay. Okay. All right, should we do some quick hits here? Let's let's do it. The quicker, the better. <laughs> yeah. uh, for a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more with DoorDash. Enter promo code NATION25, offer valid in Canada, subject to change. Terms may apply. Cool little moment over the weekend. Jonathan Quick passed Ryan Miller mm. with 392 wins, making him the winningest U.S.-born goalie in NHL history. Uh, really, not, really good. I would have said, you know, even he's probably a better goalie than Miller anyway. 
But whoa. now, whoa, 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 whoa! I don't, don't think, think so? so. No, no, not even close. Not even close, really. Yeah, I, th- I think Brian Miller is much better. Jonathan Quick's played. Look, look where he's played. He's played with the LA Kings on a very good team for over a decade. Then he goes and plays for the Rangers, <sighs> a very good team. Ryan Miller played with the Buffalo Sabres for a while when they were not good. Yeah, you're probably right. But Quick, Quick at his best was better than Miller at his best. I think those Plus, cup runs. I I would take much like I would take Craig Anderson over Carey Price. I'm taking Ryan Miller over Jonathan Quick. And maybe there's some bias there because we, me and Ryan are very, very good friends. Okay. And me and Jonathan Quick did win the All-Star game together. So I have a connection to both of them. You know what I mean? But I, Ryan Miller, I think, is very, very underrated. Fantastic old time. Yeah. Um, the scoring race now for the, the most points in the league is very, very close. This is as close as we've seen it in years. Because usually there's one or two guys, usually McDavid or Kucherov, who runs away with it. Right now, McKinnon has 127 points. He has eight games left to play. Kucherov, 126 with nine games left to play. And McDavid, 125 with 10 games left to play. John, if you were a betting man, which you are, what's your prediction for who finishes first with the most points? McDavid. Yeah. Yeah. He, Tim, how many, how many less games has McDavid played? I think he's played – he was injured for a while, so he's probably like – eight less games than those guys. I don't have right here in front of me, but McDavid is incredible. I think he finishes first in the league in points, but I do not think he wins MVP. Yeah, you're probably right. I think Which I is think, unfortunate, Tim, because well, he should. I think McKinnon should win it. I hope why McKinnon finishes. Why? why? Why, 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 I think he's got the most complete game of the three. Mm-hmm. And he's probably going to have as many points or more than the other two. So he's got the most right now. I think he's the most complete player right now. So, so yeah, David only missed two pick. games. I was wrong. So he's played 70. He's got 10 more. That means he only missed two games. It seemed like more. It did. But it? McKinnon's played a full season. Same with Kucherov. So I don't know. I, th- I th- <sighs> McDavid should win it, but he has set that bar so high. If he just wins the point race by one, I feel like they give it to the next closest guy. That's just my opinion. It's like Gretzky had the same thing going to him. If he didn't, you know, lap everybody by 80 points. It was a bad season for him. It'll be interesting. Point. It, yeah. It's a great point. I'm so, <laughs> so smart. But we'll see. I do think McKinnon's the better player all around. I agree with you. But that's not what the awards are for. We saw last year with Eric Carlson winning the Norris, getting 100 points, but he was the sh- suckiest defenseman there was. It stinks. It stinks. All right. Moving on. What's going on? I saw a cool stat over the weekend too. Matthews, Austin Matthews, has more career goals than anyone else drafted since 2010, even though he was only drafted in 2016, which is just, it's pretty amazing. Um, really, Ovechkin is the only comparable in, in modern hockey. And then you can go back to Gretzky and some other guys had silly numbers too, obviously, but just shows how much better he is at goal scoring than just about everyone else in the league at this point. Yeah, interesting concept or just something to wrap your brain around. He might come fourth in MVP voting and he gets 70 goals. Yeah. Right? Because McKinnon, Kucherov, and McDavid are having outstanding seasons, and then Matthews just cannot pass the puck. So he's going to have 70 goals and 35 assists. Chew on that, Tim. The last thing here, uh, Shane Wright, remember him, was called up over the weekend from Coachella. He played the bulk of the season down there in the AHL, putting up 20 points, 40, 40, 20 goals, 43 points in 56 games. He played three goals, three games back in uh, for the Kraken back in November. Wasn't playing much fourth line, you know, m- not much of a spot there. I wonder with them out of the playoff hunt, do they give him some some realized time and see what he can do over the final couple of weeks here? Is he still is he still a prospect in your eyes, or is he was he just a miss completely at this point? I don't care. <laughs> Uh, I, I honestly don't. Can, He's a bust don't at lie. this point. Uh, Coachella. Tell the have, truth. Uh, have you ever been to Coachella, Tim? I've not. Coachella Valley. The um, no, the big concert where all the Hollywood stars mm. get all glammed up, go to the desert, and pretend to like music for a while just so they can get out there, get their face out there. You've never done that? No. Gronk and I were going to go one time, but the schedules didn't work out. He doesn't seem like a Coachella guy to me. I'm sure he's been with his girlfriend. Have you been? No, I'm not a Coachella guy. 
No, it, that's that's the EDM music, the electro disco mix. Is that what? Um, that's not my style. So, Electronic dance mu- music, but yeah, me neither. No, I'm more of a, just a old, just just an old rock on, country now too, big time country guy. But is there anything else, Tim? No, no. Hope hope everyone had a nice long weekend. Happy Easter if you celebrate, and we'll be back on Wednesday. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for sticking with us. We'll talk to everybody on Wednesday. Cheers. Thanks for listening to Dropping the Gloves with John Scott, a member of the Nation Network of Podcasts. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from to never miss an episode.